Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our JavaScript series. So in the previous video, we have already talked about that what do you mean by callback hell? Or we can say the pyramid of a doom. The problem with the pyramid of doom or callback hell is that not at all readable. It's the worst thing that you are writing it. It means it's not at all, it's so difficult to uh, read, not at all having the good uh, readability. Plus, error handling is also very complex here. Debugging also very complex here. So it's a kind of nested a chain that I have created with the so many asynchronous functions here. In order to fix it, we have already seen that we can use promises or you can use the async and await that we are going to cover in the upcoming chapters. But today I have come up with a very interesting a scenario so that I can show you that why we should not use the callback hen. Right, and why should not use the nested uh, callbacks, or you can say the pyramid of doom or callback hell also? So, simple example let's say I really want to make a coffee, and uh, in order to make a coffee, that I'll start the coffee machine, and all these are the asynchronous steps that I really want to use it in my process of making the coffee. So, start the coffee machine, which will take around two seconds. This is again, uh, I have to wait for two seconds, then only I can proceed with the next step. The next step is that. Uh, grind the coffee beans for one second you can say for the one second and then boil the water water for the 1.5 second pour the boiling water into a cup and then wait for 0 0.5 seconds in that case or you can say 500 millisecond and ground coffee to the cup for 0 0.5 seconds stir the coffee with the stir and uh, that is around 0 0.3 second and then finally the coffee is ready enjoy your coffee so all these are the asynchronous steps that I have written. And then I really want to follow the exactly same process in the same sequence the way it is written. And I really want to wait that until the coffee machine is ready, then only uh, I can start the grinding the coffee beans. And the, once the coffee beans are uh, completely done, then in that case, then only I can go with the boiled water and then water into a cup and then add ground coffee to the cup and then stir the coffee and then like that, right? It's not like stir the coffee is randomly coming here. So I want to arrange in a particular sequence here and all these are the asynchronous steps are written and I really want to make it in a, in a proper sequence with the synchronous uh, sequence that we have to maintain here, right? So I have created, uh, you can say different functions here. So three, plus three, six, and plus one, seven function that I have already created, like start the coffee machine. And I'm taking one callback function as an argument, printing a statement here that is starting the coffee machine. And I'm writing one set timeout, which is around 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. You can say that the coffee machine is ready and which is returning a callback like coffee machine is ready over here with this particular value. So I'm not using a promise. I'm using a typical callback here that we have already seen that what do you mean by callback and everything. So I'm just calling this function by calling this callback here and then uh, using this particular statement here and waiting for the 2000 second. Same thing after that, grind the coffee beans. Again, taking callback as a function argument here and then uh, printing this uh, coffee beans are ground and ground the coffee for one second. And whatever the number of seconds that I have returned, the same number of seconds with the set timeout to make it more, uh, to make it asynchronous a function that I have used it here, like boiling the water, so water is boiled, boil the water. The pour boiling water into a cup. This is another function. I need a boiled water and then again the callback function for that. Then I say, okay, fine, add coffee to cup. So I need a ground coffee. I need the coffee, a grounded coffee or coffee powder for that. And then callback function once again. And then again, coffee in cup and then call back, right? And then finally, enjoy the coffee. The enjoy my coffee at the final coffee argument that I'm passing it over here like this. Right. So we have to arrange in the same sequence. That is what again I have written here. So if I really want to write it with the help of uh, let's see callback and I really want to create a callback hell. So let's write a callback hell here in the same sequence that I want to use it. So for example, the first that I'm going to start it, the start the coffee machine. It means I want to call this function. This function says, okay, you give me the callback function name and then we have one callback function which is return with the set timeout and will behave like a asynchronous call that after 2000 milliseconds then we will return the coffee machine is ready as a value we will return it so once we give you the value you hold it in some variable here so i simply say okay fine that i'm going to use it as a callback function and then i'm going to create a 
simple let's see variable name that a uh, coffee machine status whatever the coffee machine status that i want to get it and then i can just simply use it here and that's it after that what is the next step the next step is that grind the coffee beans so let's call this grind the coffee beans and here i'm writing that okay fine that function and then whatever the grounded coffee is available that i'm writing here that ground a uh, coffee here and this is the callback variable it means after calling this whatever the output we are getting we are storing in the ground coffee variable and then after that we have the boil water so we have to call the boil water function so let's call the boil water and then again i'm writing that uh, for the boil water a uh, function and then we have to use it let's see the whatever the boil water boil water will give me what the boil water says okay fine whatever the boiled water is available we will give it to you so it is giving to me so i'm storing in some boil water variable here so i can create one boil water variable here like this let's see boil water variable and once this boil water is available after that what is the next step it says that pour the boiling water into a cup so here i'm going to call this function uh pour the boiling water into a cup this function says you give me the boiled water and give me the callback function that we are going to call it and we will return the boiled water in cup this particular string we will give it to you so in that case i simply say okay fine that whatever the boiled water let's make it boiled water the same variable that i'm going to use it here and then i'm going to pass as a function parameter and whatever the callback function that you are calling you give me in that particular variable so it says that we will give you the boiled water into the cup okay so here i'm writing that okay fine you give me water in cup variable that i have created here simple then after that we have add ground coffee to the cup so then we are going to call this function that add a uh, coffee to cup function that we are going to use it here and this add coffee to cup function says that you give me the ground coffee and then call back and then we will give you what we will give you the coffee is added to the ground coffee simple so we are calling that add a uh, coffee to cup and then we are just creating let's see a uh, coffee in cup variable that is what we are going to use it and then we are going to pass function and give me whatever the output that is um we will say the coffee in cup we can use it here so i'll do one thing that uh, let's make this variable let's see give me the ground coffee and the function that we are calling uh, add coffee to cup which says that we will give you coffee is added to the ground coffee okay no worries so we will do one thing that i'm going to store it that the coffee is ready i mean the coffee in cup you have to give it to me perfect so we have written what the whatever the ground uh, coffee which is available and then uh, function coffee in cup we are capturing it here okay this is just an example okay and um, add coffee to cup after that we have to do what stir the coffee so here i'm calling let's see stir the coffee and for stirring the coffee what we want whatever the coffee in cup that we are having it because this function says that you give me coffee in cup and a call back value which is enjoyable coffee in cup will be given to you so i'll say okay fine whatever you are giving that i'm going to use it in this particular function and then i'm going to store it that final coffee let's see i'm using it here that final coffee is ready final coffee and once the final coffee is ready then i'm finally calling the enjoy your coffee this particular function and final coffee i'm going to pass it here so i simply say okay fine that enjoy the coffee and the final coffee you take it over here right so if you see that to maintain all the sequences all the asynchronous sequences that i have maintain a particular nested callback functions i'm calling it here and this is a callback hell that i'm creating here line by line nested by nested here so let's see is it really working or not and i'm calling this particular here so here you can see starting the coffee machine coffee machine is ready grinding the coffee beans and coffee beans are ground boiling water and then exact same sequence water is boiled pouring the boiling water into a cup boiled water is in the cup now adding the ground coffee to the cup coffee is added to the cup now stir the coffee coffee is stirred now finally and enjoy my enjoyable coffee is added to the ground coffee and then finally i'm enjoying the coffee here 
perfect. So function is working fine. The sequence is also working fine. But is it really a better readability? And so many nested, uh, I would say, callbacks that I have written. Tomorrow, if you have 20 steps or 100 steps are there and you have to follow a specific sequence, it will create a very lengthy callback hell or nested callback here. So that's why we avoid to write the code like this. That's why the promises and then a better code management we will write in the form of uh, async and await functions or blocks that we are going to learn very soon in the next chapter, we are going to do that. So before that, I really wanted to show you what is the problem with the callback hell here. Same thing, if you really want to use the callback hell with the arrow function, uh, with arrow. Arrow means I'm talking about this one, okay? So how to use this? So again, exactly same thing that I'm going to use it here. The only thing is that we don't need to write. Let me just comment it out this one. Both will work same, but this is again the callback hell with the arrow. So instead of this uh, function, what we just need to do, we have to remove this from here and we just need to start it here like this, that with the arrow here like that. Perfect. Same thing, remove the function from here and then start the arrow here like this. So this is like my callback function that I'm using it. Remove the function from here. So let me just quickly update it here like this. And here also I'm using this one. And finally, enjoy the coffee here. Let's run it with the arrow also. Is it really working or not? So let me just clear the console and uh, let's see. So here you can see that in the same sequence, it's working fine. And the number of milliseconds that we have done for the specific uh, function or for the specific step, it's taking that amount of time, then only the callback function will return the value here, right? So I hope uh, this is clear. Why are we, uh, what is the purpose of using the callback hell here and why we should avoid that? It is not at all readable, not that easy to debug and not that easy to find the errors also if any of the step or internal or nested step is getting failed. I hope this example is super simple and easy to cover that. That's all for this video, guys. Thank you so much.